All right, well, can you just describe what this experience is like coming here to see this fight that's going to have a, you know, a big future for you? What are your thoughts? Um, you know, I'm here and I'm really excited. Um, you know, uh, coming to a Bellator show as a fan as opposed to being a fighter is a lot different. But I'm just enjoying it. I don't have to cut a bunch of weight to, you know, kind of make it a miserable week here in Chicago. So, um, you know, I treat it as fight week, you know. Come enjoy it, take it serious, and, um, you know, I get to find out who's next. So I'm very excited for that co-main event with Patricio Pippo and Sergio. And, um, you know, to be honest with you, I want to fight the pound for pound number one. I want Patricio to make history tonight, be a three-way world champion. And, um, you know, I have the other piece of that, the interim champ, and uh, I want to fight him. And I know you're saying that that's who you want to fight, but how do you actually see this fight going? I think Patricio gets it done. You know, he's got so much experience. Um, I think he gets the job done. And if he doesn't, then Pettis will look spectacular because that's how he wins. And he, he's a spectacular finisher himself. So, you know, either one, I think by the end of the night, their names are going to be much bigger than they are now. So either one, I have a shot at uh, – you know, even a bigger opportunity than I just had with the million dollars against Seth. And I know, I, if I remember correctly, this fight was announced before your fight had even happened. What were your thoughts when you heard that? Was there a little bit of like, hey, wait, what about us? Yeah, you know, because I figured um, I win the interim belt, I win the tournament, and I could kind of get Pettis coming off injury, mm -hmm. you know, with all the momentum. You know, I felt like that would have been a little easier of a fight, but um, I was kind of happy, too because who it would be, you know, Patricio Pitbull. So, you know, the Bellator GOAT, you know, his name in itself is, you know, huge. So I felt um, a big chip on my shoulder and, uh, you know, to go out there and knock Stats out cold in the first round, um, win a million dollars. I have a lot of momentum and, um, you know, I'm ready for one of them. How do you see the fight going with each one of them, with you? With me, I think I can dominate and finish anyone in the world. So, um, you know. I do what I do best, you know. I, th I think I could take anyone down. I think I could put anyone away on the floor. Um, I'm a submission king. You know, the only one that has similar finishes to me is Charles Oliveira in the last five years, and I have more than him. So, um, you know, I'm a finisher on the ground, and I just showed I could knock people out. So I think, you know, on the feet, on the mat, anywhere, I feel like I can finish either one. So, you know, I would really like to test myself, and, um, you know, I want to, uh, you know, if I f when I do fight either one, what I can promise is I'm going to go out there to hunt them and I'm going to go out there to finish them. I'm not a point fighter. Last question for me. When would you like to see this fight happen between the two of you? I hope this fight's quick tonight and they're healthy because um, I'm ready and I've been in the gym since my last fight. So I'm ready to go four weeks, six weeks, mm -hmm. next week. So. Are there any specific aspects about either of those guys' games that impress you? Yes. Um, they're both deadly strikers. Um, Patricio Pipple's a high-level black belt on the ground. Um, I mean, he's got 20-something finishes, so, you know, I have 14. You know, he's got 10 more than me, I believe, so. That in itself is scary, and um, it gets me up at night. I mean, in the morning, should I say. It gets me up. It gets me ready to train. It gets me motivated, and that's the most important thing. So um, they have a lot of skill and a lot of game, both of them. Um, and, uh, I mean, Patricio overall, I think he kind of – you know, more to worry about because Pettis, I think, is just primarily a striker, but they both have a lot to offer. Definitely. Thank you. Is Hawaii the best place you ever spent a fight camp? Yeah. Or fight week? Yeah, fight week. Back-to-back uh, -back years in Hawaii, you know, first year was against Horiguchi, and then the second year I won a million dollars. Um, it was amazing, and, um, you know, I don't know. I'm hoping they bring me back and, uh, you know, we can make it 3-0 and out there. Do it. Do it. Oh, Patchy right here. Um, <clears throat> obviously, Patricio is kind of hungry for getting extra hardware. He loves to – he moved up. He's now he's moving down for you. Is that something that you've thought about at all? Do you have similar aspirations where you feel your body type at all? You could move up and, and try for 145 or – Yeah, I mean, I'm big for the weight class. I cut a lot of weight. I'm bigger than, you know, the whole division. So, um, you know, I think down the line I'll probably go up, but not now. Um, I have teammates doing business up there, Jeremy Kennedy, Mads Brunel. Um, they're both part of my team at Extreme, you know, um, and uh, they're right in line for that title shot. So, you know, that's free game to them. You know, I want uh, multiple title 
holders out of my gym, um, out of the stable of people I train. I'm not trying to hold up any divisions right now. I want to be the best bantamweight champion in the promotion's history, and um, that's my main goal, my main focus. And right now I have the most finishes in the history of bantamweight and the most submissions. So I want to run that number up and be the best champion that they've ever had. You mentioned not holding up divisions. Um, are you concerned at all, like Patricio mentioned in 125, that somehow, some way, you know, you might have to fight again before you, you, uh, you know, unify the titles? Yeah, um, that kind of makes me nervous for sure, um, especially even if Pettis wins. You know, I could see him trying to move down to 125 and get champ champ status, um, seeing as he has a win over Horiguchi. Um, I'm just hoping that, you know, they honor it um, w so we can unify these, you know. I'm the rightful interim champion. I'm the rightful next guy. I've had the toughest last three fights being in the tournament. I fought a who's who, you know, killers, and I've been finishing them. So, um, you know, no division changes, none of that, you know, no four weight champion bullshit, none of that, you know. Um, I'm next, and uh, I think, you know, uh, I'm the rightful guy, you know, I'm the most dangerous guy, so. Patchy, two quick ones. Appreciate your time. Uh, first one is outside of the physical preparation you have throughout all your fight weeks, is there anything on the mental side of things that you uh, brought into your camp? Yeah, just um, a lot more time with just visualizing, a lot more time, um, you know, listening to myself, not just going to the gym and just, you know, listening to, let's say, other people that are influencing me or just, you know, coaches that I don't feel have the best knowledge of it. You know, I just felt like, you know, after I lost, I took a lot of the, um, the burden and responsibility I put in my own hands. And, um, you know, I, uh, I leave my camp and um, a lot of visualization, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of work on the mental side, too, to get ready for these fights, you know. I'm almost obsessed with whoever I'm fighting, you know, throughout my entire days um, for weeks leading up to it. And um, it sounds crazy, but I feel like, you know, you have to be crazy in order to be a world champion. You have to be different in order to be, um, you know, a champion of this caliber. And um, I'm going to prove why I am. Absolutely. Did the mental aspect of the game come in after you suffered that, that rare loss? Or is this something you've had your entire career? I've had it my entire career, but I feel like, um, you know, at some point I got a little overconfident because, you know, I had finished everyone for the last four or five years at a, at a time in my life, and I had never lost any rounds. So, um, you know, I tried so hard to finish Juan, and I'm 10 minutes into a fight that I'm dominating up two rounds to nothing, and I'm like, damn, I'm tired now. So, um, you know, visualizing what happens if you don't finish him like kind of how I did against Horiguchi, visualizing how you can win rounds late. Um, just uh, a lot of maturity, a lot of growth, you know, and now I'm, you know, entering my prime. I was like, I think I just turned 26 at that time, you know, 29 now, I'm bigger, I'm stronger, I'm faster, and, uh, you know, I've done a lot on the physical side, but like you said, the mental side is a big, a big part of it too. Yeah, it didn't take you long to get back on that finishing train. And then a quick fun one for you. Any big purchases after that million dollar winner? No, me and uh, Tatiana, we're still looking for a house out in Vegas. So, um, you know, I'm just going to buy a house, uh, stay grounded, stay humble. And um, they say the first million is your hardest. So, you know, I'm coming for a lot more. <laughs> I wish I knew, but I, I'll take your word for it. <laughs>